Kia ora and welcome everybody uh, to my presentation for Drupal Gov 2020 uh, on Archive Central and Next Generation Records Repository. So my name is Jonathan Hunt, I work at Catalyst IT here in Christchurch, New Zealand. The slides for this presentation are available at the URL on the screen uh, via GitLab pages. So for the next 15 minutes I'm going to talk to you about the work that we did for Archive Central. Archive Central is a uh, archiving, a physical archive and a digital archive run by a consortium of nine councils in the central North Island of New Zealand. And we used Drupal 8, specifically a distribution called Islandora, which is a di digital asset management system, uh, to handle their digital archives. So they evaluated both Islandora and Archive and uh, Archive Space and several other solutions, and they settled on Islandora as being the best option for their needs. And this implementation was in the first handful of Islandora 8s implemented around the world. One of the things that makes it distinctive is that we implemented the Records in Contexts ontology uh, from the International Council of Archives. This is a brand new conceptual model intended to bring uh, as a data model for archiving uh, with a focus on bringing archives into the linked data world. So as part of that, we did some data modeling in Drupal and we also had to do a migration uh, out of the existing system called Kete. We migrated records and then binary files such as still images and documents and the supporting data around that content, including agents, which in this case is primarily organizations. Just a quick word about uh, Catalyst. We're an open source solutions company with significant Drupal expertise and experience, and we have offices around the planet. So Archive Central had an existing digital repository based on Kete, which was a Ruby on Rails solution uh, that were originated about 10 years ago. However, it didn't really catch on um, and lacked community support. So even though it was open source, they really had no uh, roadmap for improvements. So they were looking around for options. Uh, also, the Kete system that they're on uh, lacked a responsive theme. So that was one of the things we bought, we, uh, we contributed when we moved them to Drupal 8. So this is an example screenshot from the Drupal 8 system showing the same content. If I open up that specific object page, which in this case is an aerial photograph, you'll see I'm logged in here, which is why I have the, the uh, menu bar highlighted. Uh, this is an aerial photograph that's been scanned. You can see some metadata around that specific digital object uh, and includes where the physical object is stored. This particular object is being displayed using the Open Sea Dragon uh, viewer, which uh, uses IIIF to pull tiles from the backend server and that gives you a nice smooth interactive zoom where you can zoom in and pan around and see the object the way it should be seen. One of the things to look behind the scenes here is if I click on media you'll see the original file and then you'll see a couple of derivatives in this case a thumbnail image and a service file that have been generated automatically by the Islandora microservices. Just a very quick introduction to the architecture of Islandora. So Islandora consists of a Drupal 8 uh, distribution and Drupal stores the binaries and metadata in a content repository called Fedora otherwise known as FC Repo. On the other side of that, you've got um, 
indexing of the metadata into Solar for keyword search and Blaze Graph for graph search. Islandora is supported by a range of microservices that do things like derivative generation, so generating uh, thumbnails uh, or service files, transcoding for video or audio, OCR, um, FITS, which extracts metadata like uh, EXIF, etc. from files, and any number of other microservices that can fit in and be uh, invoked when you are ingesting new material into the archive. So one of the primary contributions that we brought to this was uh, adopting the brand new records and contexts conceptual model. As I said, this has been generated uh, to bring the archives world into the world of linked data. Uh, it's records and contexts started in around 2016 and they're up to version 0.2, so it's still a work in progress. But what the Records and Context ontology defines is uh, entities, which in this case could be records or corporate bodies, etc. Uh, attributes, which are the fields that go with those entities, and relations between entities. And version 0.2 of the conceptual model has 22 entities, 41 attributes, 78 relations. An example of uh, an overview of the entity hierarchy is shown here with the ones that we have used in Archive Central highlighted. You can see that we have record sets which are essentially collections of records and records in turn might be composed of record parts. There's an instantiation that goes with the record and that's the uh, digital component, the digital file is an instantiation, for example, a scan of a photograph those records and record sets are uh, given context by additional metadata that might describe an agent and agents break down into persons, families or corporate bodies. And corporate bodies would typically be government agencies or, or commercial companies and so forth. They're further categorised by date and place. Uh, so one of the significant changes that we made is Rather than implementing dates as a class in their own right, uh, we use the out of the box archive, uh, Islandora EDTF format. So that's extended date time format from the libraries. Uh, so, just very quickly, the mapping from records in context of Drupal record sets, i.e., a series or a collection, is mapped to nodes. Records are made up of nodes along with media and files. Uh, agents in records and contexts are mapped to the out of the box iron drawer, corporate body, family, or person. And though those entities are defined on the Drupal side as terms within vocabularies. Uh, place maps to the geographical location term that comes out of the box. In Islandora 8. Uh, accessions, which is incoming material for the archives uh, mapped to nodes. Uh, we also did some work around containers and locations, so tracking the actual physical storage in terms of shelves and racks and boxes and so forth. Uh, so those were some custom Drupal node entities. And along with that, we have some other standard content management type uh, components, writes, newsletters, etc. Because all of this is mapped to RDF, we have uh, any of the records can be exposed as linked data, in this case, with uh, as JSON linked data. And you can see here that the uh, type of record, it maps to um, the records and context ontology type of record, and it also maps to the Portland common data model type of object. This is an example of the uh, edit page. And if I quickly jump to the live instance, I can show you the edit page in action. Um, you can see that there's an extensive number of fields. 
and we've annotated the labels of these fields with the relevant uh, attribute from the records and context standard. So if anybody, uh, any staff doing data entry, if they have a question about what should go into that field, they can actually reference the standard directly using those label annotations. A couple of other things of note, one is the linked agent uh, that uses records and context or Library of Congress uh, mark relators, which gives you a really extensive vocabulary of around 200 different ways that a person or an agent could be related to a given work. So you can have, instead of just Dublin Core, creator, contributor, publisher, the mark relators gives you things like photographer or interviewer or interviewee and so forth. One of the other features here is uh, these fields with distinct backgrounds, those are private fields. So those are visible to staff when they're authenticated, uh, but they're not visible to the public. Uh, so just a very quick comment about the migration. We had to migrate over 210,000 records, including around 7,000 images and 600 PDF documents. We used the Drupal 8 Migrate framework for that, of course, and it worked well for us. The primary source for the migration was a local snapshot of the Kete MySQL database, but we also used a little bit of CSV and some embedded JSON, uh, basically to do some preparatory work like setting up some default licensing and rights and a few other terms for example formats and so forth so those were populated using migrations where we just embedded the the relevant data directly in the migration using embedded json uh, obviously there's a direct there's a sequence that you need to follow for a given migration in terms of dependencies between data so we migrated users uh, kites became groups so one of the things to note about this installation is that the individual councils have been mapped to Drupal 8 groups to give them some access control around their own material and so staff can have rights to edit just the content relevant to a specific council. Uh, we migrated some basic pages, licenses went to rights, agencies to agents, successions to accessions and so forth. Uh, one of the things to note at the end there, we had trackable items which basically mapped to the locations and containers, we needed an intermediate table for that. So we migrated some of the content out of Kete into an intermediate table, and then we did a second pass of the migration to actually establish the Drupal entities that we wanted. As is usual for this kind of thing, there were some challenges around the data. This is what happens when you have a group of people maintaining content over a long period. Some interesting things were long titles. So we had some exceptionally long object titles, over 1,200 characters, which of course makes for some huge URLs if you're using uh, a title token for your URLs. And uh, we shunted those off into a distinct full title field, which uh, was then allowed Archive Central staff to manually migrate those and tidy those up after, after the full migration. There were various values that have been put into fields that meant essentially the same thing. So consult archivist, see archivist, refer to archivist. Those were all mapped and consolidated within the Drupal 8 migration YAML. And we used open refine uh, to examine the content that we were working with and to come up with, you know, identify common values to things and the range of values that were in certain fields. Uh, we also had to do some processing because of relatively simple off by one errors. So in Matheson City Archives with or without the capital A for archives, uh, by default that would show up as two different terms. So we, we consolidated and merged those. Uh, and there were various challenges around data modeling. Uh, for example, putting coordinates against a record when ideally coordinates should be on uh, a place term that is associated with the record. So just to wrap up, uh, Islandora is a next generation repository based on Drupal 8. Uh, it's very flexible and can map to almost any metadata. In this case, we adopted the records and contexts conceptual model which is a very good fit for archiving. Uh, 
we use linked data extensively exposed to JSON LD and indexed into Blaze Graph. We use linked agents and specifically the mark relators to give a rich model for the ways that people can be associated with content. We implemented a responsive theme based on Bootstrap 4. I haven't shown you the search API uh, or the search interface, but it uses search API, including extensive use of facets. And under the hood, one of the microservices is OCR, so that lifts the text out of PDFs. We've got group-based access control around uh, individual councils' content, and we use the IIIF viewer uh, for zooming and looking at tiled images, and those are served by Cantaloupe. So that's a very quick introduction to the Archive Central project. If you have further questions, please email me at jhunt.catalyst.net.nz or catch me at the Catalyst booth after this presentation. I hope that was useful to you and I hope you have a great Drupal Gov 2020. Uh, I've posted a link to the slides in the discussion forum. Uh, so if you want to go back to any of those links, uh, check out that. Um, I'll also paste in a few examples of uh, content if you want to follow up on what uh, things like photographs and so forth might look like. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. This was sure. a great presentation. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody.